For his whole life, Michael Barnes loved the ocean. All he ever wanted was to be a Navy clearance diver. From where I started out as a kid, looking at these people ahead of me and just, just thinking how I just couldn't imagine ever being there. After serving in his dream job for nearly three decades, this is now the closest he'll ever get to diving again. In 2021, my lung popped, putting on a pair of shoes. And yeah, that sort of sealed the end of my diving career. I wept. Having been told that I'd never dive again was probably the worst thing that um, the, the worst words that have been spoken to me in my 29 years of service. It's not just physical injuries Michael carries. My long-term memory seems to be okay, but what I did five minutes ago, I couldn't tell you. Headaches, yes. Dizzy spells, yes. I started to recognise that my fuse was a lot shorter than it had ever been it's getting worse. Um, it hasn't gotten better. Navy clearance divers were initially tasked with clearing up explosive ordnance from World War II. Now their role is more diverse and includes maritime tactical operations, mine countermeasures and underwater demolitions. Some also serve with the special forces. They are Navy's elite forces. And a lot of them are also co-qualified as commandos now or historically into the SAS as well. They are regularly exposed to blasts both in training environments and then of course when they are deployed. Scientists are now finding the invisible pressure waves from repeated low-level exposure to blasts can cause microscopic damage and scarring to the brain. Five. Michael Barnes was deployed as an explosive ordnance disposal expert multiple times over his career. Happy New Year! Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah. Including to Afghanistan in 2010. That was big. That was massive. There has been times where I knew I was way too close because the feeling that I got from it was, you know, like I'd just been punched in the head. Over, you know, nine, just over nine month period, you know, we were doing probably upwards of a couple hundred explosions. It was in the calm that followed back home with his family that things changed. I had no control over at times, what would exit my mouth or the way I would react to a certain situation. It was his family, including his mum, Sue, that noticed it first. He's always been there for us, but yeah, seeing him come go downhill was really hard. Then he started getting, you know, like he, he'd get angry over the, always the littlest things, you know, his memory loss something I've never seen in Michael, but talk about things and he doesn't remember. He's going off the, you know, what do you call it, the temper, you know, that fast. Um, it's not like Michael. There's more to it. After a road rage incident, he saw a psychiatrist and was diagnosed with PTSD. It didn't sit with me at all. It never did. And it didn't tie in with what was happening with me you know, with my memory or my headaches or my lung collapsing spontaneously. I felt like there was more to the situation other than what I'd been diagnosed with. The neurological symptoms, head in, uh, uh, headache, sometimes migraine, difficulty with memory and other cognitive functions, and then difficulties with emotion, dysregulation of emotion, outbursts of anger, depression, anxiety. It's absolutely obvious 
Neurologist Dr David Rosen has been seeing patients with head injury for decades, including Navy clearance divers. You find out that they've been exposed to multiple blast injuries, so-called minor blast injuries, but that trivialises it. These are not minor injuries. They may be minor blasts, but they're not minor injuries. We've spoken to more than two dozen serving in veteran Navy clearance divers who described a strikingly similar set of symptoms in themselves or their colleagues. Many were exposed to blast while on deployment or while training with the Special Forces in Australia. Multiple veterans said they'd attempted suicide themselves while others had been hospitalised in mental health facilities for weeks at a time. They are clearly having behavioural issues there is clearly a medical cause for this, which nobody understands. Denise Goldsworthy is fielding daily calls from clearance divers struggling to cope. You get some of them where clearly they've got PTSD. But then I talk to a lot of other clearance divers and they struggle to understand what is going on with them. You know, all you can wonder is that there is a high probability that some of these individuals have got physical brain injuries and the PTSD treatments are not working for them. One of the challenges detecting brain injury from blast exposure is that it often can't be seen on scans. I have no doubt that repetitive blast overexposure, overpressure does lead to functional abnormalities within the brain. I think there's now a, a really good body of evidence that um, you know, repetitive, subconcussive, subclinical neurotrauma does lead to long-term impairment, does lead to changes in brain structure and brain function. Dr Ben Dunkley is using new kinds of magnetic scanners called MEG to analyse the brains of Canadian veterans. The group of more blast reported poor or neurological functioning, including cognitive impairment, uh, physical and somatic symptoms, and they also showed this, these functional abnormalities in the frontotemporal parts of their brain. And the interaction of concussions with PTSD and... and He's so in Australia to share his findings. So I don't think at this stage we can categorically say that it's causal, but we can certainly say that, you know, in those that have more blast, they show greater brain functional abnormalities and uh, a more severe set of symptoms. Adam Baker spent years trying to figure out what was wrong inside his head. It's debilitating, but it's so subtle. You know something's wrong, but you can't put a finger on it. It's good footage. Um, it's a point in time, um, really. He joined the Special Forces Counter-Terrorism Training Unit at Holsworthy in the early 2000s. Essentially, as, as a method of entry operator is putting a charge on a door or window or wall, you're the person at the front of the pack exposed to the charge. And any given week, it could be exposure to, you know, two, three, four days of explosive training. When I met Adam, he was extremely fit, extremely driven. That sort of started to change probably, I'd say probably five to six months in, um, where I saw more of um, anxious tendencies and probably emotional regulation. His dream career came to an abrupt end in 2005 when he was asked to leave the unit. Within an hour, I was putting weapons away and packing gear and I was out of there unknown as to, you know, what, what, what was wrong with me. And shortly after, I, I discharged from the ADF after 11 years of service. Over the next few years, he experienced hearing loss, tinnitus, short-term memory loss, and his mental health deteriorated. Whether it was um, an aggressive outburst for no reason, or no apparent reason, or it might be, uh, you know, the start, starting to cry, which is, you know, as embarrassing as it might be, Watching, watching, watching a movie and just find yourself crying for no reason. And you just think, What's, what the hell is wrong with me? Whilst I'm trying to um, support Adam and be patient and be aware, I'm also 
a mother who's protecting her children and not wanting them to see uh, the reality of the consequences of, of what's happening with, with him as well. So it's, it's a fine line. When he started medication for PTSD, it only made things worse. I was using too much alcohol. I was in between jobs. In one, in one particular instance, I lost a job because of an aggressive outburst. Um, and, you know, it was, it was pretty dire at one stage there where um, suicide was, um, was an option. Where are the pelicans going? The Royal Commission heard the rate of suicide amongst clearance divers is estimated to be up to twice as high as the general population. Between December 23 and 1st of February 24, the Clarence Diver Trust was aware of 10 Clarence Divers being in hospital, seven of them for mental health reasons, four of them had attempted suicide in essentially a six or seven week period. This is not a problem that has gone away. It is not a problem that is fixed. A number of divers have um, you know, have committed suicide uh, for reasons that probably can't be explained. Do I believe that potentially there is elements of brain injury involved in a lot of these guys? Yes, and I'd love to see their brains um, analysed or donated to science um, to to find out one way or another. In 2020, after undergoing brain scans and neurological tests, Adam Baker was diagnosed with a mild traumatic brain injury. I think he used the term, there is no doubt in his mind, that the symptoms align with traumatic brain injury um, as a direct result of exposure to, uh, long-term exposure to the effects of explosive blast. David Rosen wrote the report. I make a point of not discussing individual patients. In the case of the blast injuries that I've seen, uh, they're remarkably similar, the stories. The ones that I've seen, the history is so solid in terms of describing multiple blast injuries, describing the immediate effects, the lack of any past history of psychiatric illness, mental illness or migraines or other past medical history that could contribute. So that clean slate with only really one factor makes it very likely that that was a major, if not the major, contributory factor. In 2021, DVA accepted Adam Baker's claim for mild traumatic brain injury, stating it was likely caused by repeated exposure to blast. Yeah, well, clearly they, it is a real issue, and, and I think the fact that they accepted my claim um, basically says that they're, they're aware of it. The Royal Commission has recommended a brain injury program be established to monitor exposure to low-level blasts. They are suffering and they're not talking about it because they don't... I, I think half the thing is they don't want the backlash. They don't want to look weak. They're young, strong men, but they're not mentally strong. The kind of kids that come back. Michael Barnes has cut back on drinking and is trying to find his own ways to manage his symptoms. There's all sorts of craziness goes on in my head sometimes. I ice and sauna every night before I go to bed. It's helped me relax. Um, it's helped me just, just maintain, well, start my day with a, a good clarity. He wants the many colleagues who he's watched suffer the same symptoms get answers and know they aren't alone. I love the Defence Force. I'm, you know, I'm super supportive of everything the Defence Force does, but this situation that I've found myself in now, you know, it, the wrong people are, uh, are, are dealing with the aftermath and it's my family, unfortunately. And that's, that's, the, that's the bit I have the most trouble with.
statements from the ADF and the Department of Veterans Affairs are on our website. If that story has raised any issues for you, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Or if you're a veteran or serving member, you can call the, the organisation Open Arms on 1800 011 046.